Uh, please welcome Aaron Steron. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> got to talk to Phil afterwards as being introduced as the guy who's blocking lunch. Um, but uh, I'm really happy to be here, actually. Uh, this is my first trip to Ireland. Uh, so far, what I've seen is, has been gorgeous, and I'm looking forward to, to spending more time here. Um, one thing that is interesting, uh, Phil mentioned that I came from, from Ontario uh, to come here. Specifically, I came from remote northern Ontario. And while I was there, I had no electricity, running water, or heat. Um, and so I was using the same tools that humans have been using for, I don't know, hundreds of generations to get by for heat and shelter and all those things. And I'm coming from there to here, where we're talking about what's some of the most cutting edge technology on the planet. Uh, so it's quite an interesting uh, dichotomy to look at that, and, and it really highlights the difference. Um, I'm going to talk very little about drones, actually. Um, I'm going to say up front that most people that, that we deal with, most of our customers, don't care about drones. They don't want drones. They don't want pictures from drones. Um, what they want is they want to be able to make decisions. That's all that they want. Um, Precision Hawk, uh, we don't consider ourselves to be a drone company. We do sell one. That, that is the one that we sell. Um, but fundamentally what we are is we are a data company and to, uh, an airspace safety company. Our, our real focus is providing better answers faster. Um, now, I, I apologize, I'm not sure what this says about my humility that I'm going to be quoting myself in my own presentation, um, but I borrowed this slide from somebody else because it, it actually is a, it, it does say um, what I want to say, which is that our customers don't want planes, they don't want pictures, they want answers. Um, we primarily work in ag, but we work in a, a number of other commercial applications as well, oil and gas, exploration insurance, um, resource extraction, some of the other big uh, commercial plays. Uh, we generally l work best with large enterprise clients. Um, most of them that we work with you all, all know very, very well. Um, we do fly for people, and we also sell our birds to people to fly with. But we've had customers who come up and say, the last thing I want to do you know, these large worldwide companies say, the last thing we want is an Air Force. Um, that's not what we want. So I am going to talk, just to make life easier, I'm going to talk specifically about um, agriculture and, and farming and what is the benefit of a drone as opposed to the drone technology itself. So how will a farmer benefit? What, are the, what, are the, what do you get as a farmer, as a, as a large enterprise ag client? Um, you get to optimize your inputs. And there's a lot of money being spent on inputs these days. Um, their costs are going up. Farmers are having to apply more uh, to increase yields because our populations are growing. Climates are getting um, more variable. Um, you need to be able to react far more quickly to threats, whether that's pest. Um, and so you can take mitigative action as quickly as possible. Uh, sometimes it can be weather. You need to be able to react quickly so you can get your insurance claim in. You can replant. Um, Crop scouting, uh, there's an entire industry in agriculture around helping farmers make decisions, but it is still a very manual, very intensive process to get the data that you need to do that. Um, improving your variable rate prescriptions, um, that's very s similar to optimize your inputs, but what that means is not just knowing what you're going to apply, it also means knowing whether or not you want to apply. Uh, a good example would be a commodity, a row crop. Before you decide whether or not you're going to apply a fertilizer to a row crop or a, a, a fungicide to a row crop, you need to know whether or not your row crop's going to be worth anything at the end because the best, the most economical decision might be to do nothing at all and take whatever you can get because the prices are so low. Um, and part of that is yield estimation because everybody bases all of their decisions on what they think they're going to make. And all this information is the stuff that you can get very, very well from a low altitude remote sensing platform. Uh, now, if you could have a 300-foot stepladder, that would probably be more useful because it's easier to deploy. Okay, granted, it's hard to move a 300-foot stepladder around, but you don't have to worry about regulators. You don't have to worry about what happens when the batteries in your ladder run out and things like that. But it's really hard to put one of those into a pickup truck. So what is important in all this, of course, is an end-to-end data collection stream. Because again, as I said, our customers, they don't want planes. They don't even want to look at pictures. What they want to know is, 
Do I spray? Do I not spray? Uh, do I have to replant? Things like that. So that really has a stack that goes all the way from the hardware, which is just the point of data collection. Uh, we can use our bird. We'll pull data from um, farm implements, satellites, manned deviation, historicals. Um, but that's where that piece sits. And the sensor is, of course, the starting point for that data collection. What are you trying to understand about your crop? What is the very specific answer you need? And you base your sensor on that. Because there is no one size fits all on sensors either. Um, in our case, uh, the next step is to put it up into, into the cloud um, in a tool set that we call Data Mapper, which allows um, shareholders or stakeholders that might be spread around the globe um, to be looking at this data. Because the other piece that often happens is the person who is flying the aircraft is very rarely the only person, and sometimes not even the person, who wants to look at the results. Uh, oftentimes, the person who's flying is just an agronomist or a technician out in the field, and the information is being analyzed by somebody who is on another continent, and they need to know that within hours. Um, and then the analysis piece, of course, is the next step. And that's where the real value and all of this comes from is on the analysis piece. So um, that said, I think this, this is probably my only slide where I talk about a bird. Um, this is ours. Uh, it's small. You hand launch it. It lands on its belly. Um, can carry lots of different things. Um, oh, geez. Its payload capacity is 1.55. For a second, I thought it said 155. It's like, no, that's not ours. Um, but the main point is it's a general platform. And, and the aircraft itself is a platform. Um, because what you have to do with it is to be able to deploy a large number of different payloads. Um, because, as I said, there is no one-size-fits-all. There's a lot of modified cameras out there for multispectral work. They do great jobs. Um, but if you actually wanted to get real uh, inferred information, that is a challenge. Um, so, you know, you will use visual sensors. You will use LiDAR, thermal sensors, hyperspectral, multispectral, um, ground penetrating radar, RF sensors. These all give you that whole picture of what's happening in your area of interest, your field if you're a farmer. Because it's not just what does my crop look like, it's how much so moisture is in my soil. What did I apply last time? Did I plant enough? And the other piece of that is once that sensor data has been collected, has been automatically processed, spun up, and then given to the user and saying, OK, your survey or your collection is ready. What are you going to do with it next? Um, and so in our case, we have what we call the algorithm marketplace. Um, it's an app store, essentially, is what it is. Um, we are not agronomists. We are not geologists. We are not uh, limnologists. Uh, what we do is we find people who are those things, who are much smarter than we are at those things. And we say, look, we have somebody who needs to know the spectral response of, say, potato blight. Um, and that person might be in the University of Prince Edward Island, who's done a lot of research on potato blight, but somebody in Idaho who's farming a large uh, row crop production of potatoes wants to use that algorithm. So they license it from the UPEI researcher uh, rather than from us. And so it's just that licensing model we pass through. It's an app store. And we have a few different um, algos in there. Some of them get a lot of activity. Some of them don't. But one thing that we are always looking for is new sources of that. Um, in terms of geospatial, one of our biggest, uh, most valuable systems is actually just autonomous plant counting. Uh, you might think that, why would you need to do that? But being able to identify how many of your plants actually germinated, how many are growing, what the rate they're growing at, uh, being able to do that over a 500-acre field um, very, very quickly is important because you need to know whether or not it's worthwhile to reseed. Do you have planter skips? What's the issue? Uh, and, and that's on a, a production basis. If you're talking about a, a crop researcher, where these plants might literally be worth their weight in gold, because each one of those plants, or each, each row, um, each plot, is a culmination of 10 years of genetic research, they really want to know at the end of the season if it was growing there at the beginning. Because if it's dead now, they need to know when it died. Uh, so there's a lot of different pieces that that go into these kinds of things. Uh, plant height for um, whether you're looking at field uniformity and things like that. You're looking for weeds that show up in different ways. Um, these are the kind of tools that farmers need to be able to, to um, apply. And actually, not the farmers specifically, unless they're particularly advanced, but the crop scouts um, who are applying these tools to decision support for the farmer, saying, yes, you have an issue in, the, in you know, your northeast corner. I think it's related to drainage. Um, and here are the vegetation indices that show you have considerable stress here every time it rains. 
uh, and then you make decisions based on that. Uh, crop damage, we do get into insurance. Uh, I mentioned now most of our insurance work that we do is, is in agricultural insurance, where you're looking to see, you know, a, a hailstorm just went through. Um, large hailstones punched a bunch of holes in my, in my corn crop. What does that mean to me? What does that mean to my yield? And more importantly, what does that mean to my insurance adjuster who's standing right beside me? Um, typically how it's done, um, at least in, in North America, is your insurance adjuster and you will sit there and argue about how bad the storm was and say, well, that probably took out about 30% of my crop because that's what it did last time when we had a storm like this. Um, and then they, they, they haggle and then they negotiate. Uh, in a case like this, you can fly the, fly the plane, fly the helicopter, whatever it is you want to do, and be able to get that information within a very short order so they can cut their check and go on to help the next person. Because uh, you're never the only person in an area who's facing these same issues. Um, and then looking at it across the season as well, because it's, it's, it's time-based. How are things growing? How are things decaying? When is it a right time to harvest? Um, when is things going to seed? When is corn tasseling? These are all very important aspects. Things like canopy cover um, are key uh, and, and very important tool sets for agronomists to be able to do. And the important thing is you need to have very high quality data to do all these pieces. Um, and that's where the drone does come back in because people have been doing and producing these kinds of results for 50 some odd years. The problem is that from a man deviation standpoint, uh, it's very hard to get them there exactly when you need them because not every farmer has a plane. Um, and sometimes you just can't fly because weather conditions aren't great for getting aerial imagery from 5,000 feet. Uh, satellite data, it's, it's infrequent and costs all go up when you try and task a satellite, um, although there is very good use for satellites as well. But you need to have something that's a reliable tool that fits in whether you're a geologist or a farmer or whatever, they need to treat this piece of technology like it's a shovel, like it's a, tr a tractor. They know it's got to work. When they go out there and ask it to do what it's going to do, it needs to work, and it needs to work in a way that fits with their workflow, which is most important. Um, <clears throat> plant spacing is another one, um, in-row spacing. And again, these are all things that, that, that are useful for, for growers. Um, but, but again, and, and land surface parameters. This one's from Texas A&M, a, a lot of these tools. Um, these have to fit in with an existing workflow because, well, farmers are, are a skeptical bunch. They've been promised snake oil all their lives, but somebody says, hey, if you do this, you will save $2 a bushel on corn. Um, and so they're a very skeptical bunch. So you have to be able to give them something that's easy for them to implement, doesn't require a lot of change, and just works for them. Now, land surface parameters, uh, used a lot less by farmers, but certainly something that's used by um, resource extraction companies, pit mines, gravel mines, aggregate mines, and things like that. Um, the other piece is, um, and I, meant, I don't know if I mentioned this, but we do pull data in from different sources. As I said, satellites, other drones, man deviation, historicals. Because one thing that's most important is where the drone fits is only one part of the pie. Um, in order for you to have a whole view of what you need to do, there's a lot more information than what my crop looked like yesterday. Um, you need to know what it looked like the week before. You need to know what it looked like last year. You need to know whether or not you had a dry year, um, whether or not your farmers, your neighbors are having issues as well. So a lot of times when people talk about drones and talk about how they're going to be applied, they are great tools, they're very precise tools, and they're very useful tools, but they are only a small piece of the stack. And it's really important that we, we remember that the full flow is what matters to these people. Um, and that's where all this stuff comes from. Um, <clears throat> actually, that, well, I guess that's not going to play. Um, but we do have a, a, a fairly straightforward system to use. And actually, you can get a free account and go in and start looking at all these tools um, on our data mapper side, too. Um, but one of the things that's really important in all this is how do you commercialize this technology? How do you commercialize this flow in general? Because one is, in our case, you know, we can sell our analysis tools to other drone companies, people who want to fly and collect data. Um, we can actually, we don't need to even sell the analysis tools to them. We just give them access to them because that works out well for us and works out for them too. The other thing we do a lot with is collaborating with researchers, um, in government institutions, universities, as well as other corporate partners who are doing work. Uh, as I said, we are not agronomists, uh, although it's incredible how much we learn when you start looking at this stuff, but there are people who are 
experts in understanding these things. And getting those people to say what is useful, what is not, and how you're going to apply it is absolutely key in tying them into this whole piece. And then in certain cases, we might go to some of these guys and say, look, here is the set that we, we have. Here's the pain points that our customers are feeling. Can you work with us to provide something that will address their pain point? Uh, in the end, the only way you're going to make money on this is if you make somebody's problem go away. Um, now, that problem might be, you know, in other cases, I just need a picture of something. I need a, I need a, a model of my house. I need to be able to show this from a, a marketing perspective. In other cases, like farming, they have a real need. They have very specific problems, and you have to help them make those problems go away because that's what they'll pay money for. They don't necessarily pay money for pictures, um, although there are early adopters who all do. Um, <clears throat> and so in that case, most of what we do is actually on the um, uh, evangelizing side with universities and JS groups and researchers and things like that to say, look, these are the problems we have. I know that you've gotten techniques that you use for analyzing and solving these problems. Uh, can we talk about ways that we can work together to solve this? We can bring you the end users who are asking us, who are pounding our doors down to tell us or to find out what their soil moisture content is. I can tell you right now, if anybody in the room has a soil moisture sensor that goes more than a a couple inches, um, I'd really like to talk about it um, because people need that. Um, they need those things like soil compaction down to about a meter and a half. Uh, these are really important answers to, to solve for them. And so we do have uh, a lot of groups that work with that. And that's, those are the kinds of people that help to push the ball down the field in, in our case. Um, so generally speaking, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Um, when we talk about drones, we talk about the applicability of drones and what we do with drones, the drones are the start of a pipe. And the users, the people who pay money, they want what comes out the other end of the pipe. And so you have to get that whole pipe working well so you can make money. But of course, in terms of the drone and the sensor technology, it has to be really, really good. Because no matter how good your back end is, no matter how good your analysis is, if you don't have good quality stuff coming in at the front, there's nothing you can do with it. Um, so having high quality data, high quality platforms is key. So anyway, again, thank you very much. I uh, hope I'm not eating into too much of lunch. So, so much. <laughs>